Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to the Toy Expat Daily Show. I'm Kieran Mack, as always, and delighted you've been able to tune in yet again for another show. Now, before we do get started, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when the next show or live stream is available on the platform. Now, if you like listening to us on a podcast player, such as Apple Podcasts, Google, or Spotify, there's a link down below that will take you to a website with a vast array of podcast players can be found that are supporting the show and finally if you like the show if you want to support the show the easiest and the best way to do is become a channel member details down below in the description but really it's just as simple as hitting join and now that's all done and dusted let's jump into those trending stories here in thailand today Phuket officials have issued warnings for flash floods and landslides with alerts spanning from September 17 until the 23rd, depending on the issuing agency. Continuous rain has caused flooding in several key areas, including Patak Road in Karan, Ban Kuku Road in Ratsada, and near the Darasamut underpass. The Muang Phuket District Office and the Volunteer Defence Corps are on standby for emergencies, while the Phuket City Municipality has warned residents, especially those near the Bang Yai Canal, to prepare for possible flooding during high tide. Additionally, the Phuket Marine Office has issued a navigation warning advising small boats to stay ashore due to strong winds and waves up to four meters in the Andaman Sea and the Gulf of Thailand, with thunderstorms expected until the 21st. Now, Phuket Highway Office is also addressing a road collapse on Visit Road, urging motors to avoid the area and use alternative routes to Rawai Beach. Repairs are pending as officials manage the ongoing situation. And Patong officials are working to prevent landslides on the hills behind the tourism town that endanger homes if the ongoing rain causes a landslide in the area. So for people out and about in Phuket, and not just Phuket, but all throughout Thailand, please do take care and be careful. We have are getting a lot of rain and a lot of flash floods, landslides around the country, and it's worth bearing in mind just to be careful and be aware if you are out and about. Of course, bearing that all in mind, yesterday about 130 Thai and foreign tourists, mostly Chinese, were rescued after becoming stranded on Ratchayai Island due to rough seas and strong winds, preventing tourist speedboats from retrieving them. The Royal Thai Navy dispatched a coastal patrol vessel after receiving a call for help. Despite challenging conditions, all the tours were safely brought back to Phuket. Authorities have warned small boats to avoid the sea until Monday due to the ongoing effects of a tropical depression, causing heavy rainfall, rough seas and strong winds. However, some tour operators have disregarded this advice. And that brings me down to exactly the rules and regulations that if the Marine Office should be able to issue a warning saying that no tourist boats are to go out today, that should be how it is. But the idea that these people are ignoring the Marine Office and what they're being told and continue to go out because of money and profit and greed, then I think it's about time that these kind of companies, when the Royal Thai uh, Navy have to go out and rescue people, charge these companies for having the Royal Navy having to go out and rescue these people, charge them because if they soon have to start paying, right, they'll stop doing it. And it's a complete disregard for human life and safety of people when they're going out into, you know, the ocean where there's four or five meter high waves, the boats are unable to deal with it, but they continue to do it because they're greedy individuals. And this needs to really be, you know, I mean, sorted out by the government. They like to talk about Phuket as a world-class destination, a tourist-friendly island, but yet when it comes to safety of tourists, it's something they certainly don't care about on the island as much as they should. The Tourism and Sports Ministry has introduced Entry Thailand, a new web portal designed to connect online services from various public sectors entities. This platform includes the upcoming Electronic Travel Authorization, or ETA, and the future collection of a 300 baht fee from foreign tourists. Now, the deputy government spokesperson, uh, Mong Khan Women Rat, said the portal, developed in collaboration with 12 organizations, 
offers tourists access to essential information, including flight and train schedules, event calendars, local attractions and booking services like national park accommodation and Muay Thai classes. Now, the system originally created for pandemic related travel screening aims to enhance Thailand's tourism competitiveness and support the Ignite Tourism Thailand policy. Future integrations will include the mandatory ETA for visa exempt travelers and the 300 baht tourism fee collection. The portal could also quickly reinstate travel screening measures in case of a new pandemic. Now, the platform, once fully operational, will facilitate online payments for tourism fees and may restart the tourism tax for insurance and development. As of September 15th, 24.8 million foreign arrivals have been recorded led by 5 million Chinese tourists to date. So it's quite an interesting thing. Now, I've been on the Entry Thailand website. And if anybody wants to pop over to it, it's entrythailand.go.th. It's currently only in English and Thai, and they seem to be developing it as we go along. Now, it has lots of information about your Thai e-visa, the tourist police, national park reservations, the Thai health pass. I think that's a, a hangover from the... Uh, COVID days, train ticket booking systems, uh, Muay Thai classes, uh, VAT refund for tourists, and then it has other travel information about flight statuses, OTOP, virtual historical parks, and things like this. It also then has a section on all the various uh, tourist information for each province, what I think is very, very helpful. And then they have a government directory. Now, of course, this primarily is going to be used for the uh, ETA, which I believe we'll be starting in December and going to be trialed with, I think, maybe Australia and New Zealand and then rolled out to the rest of the 92 visa exempt countries. So basically, before you come, you will have to go onto this website, fill out your details, get your travel authorization so you can enter Thailand. And I presume if you don't have it when you get to the airport, um, then you won't be flying. Basically, that's how it is, because that's how it is if you go to America or Canada or any place like that. If you don't have it, you're not getting on the plane. Sometimes it can be, you know, it can be processed very quickly, but I certainly wouldn't be heading to the airport hoping you're going to get it in, you know, 10, 15 minutes. So I'm not sure if it's going to be an automated system or it's going to be something that has to be, you know, physically looked at by a human on the other side. So that's the, the other part of it. Now, what they are talking about is also introducing the 300 baht tourism fee in the future. Now, just to go back really quick on the ETA. Now, they said for the ETA that there would be no fee because normally with an ETA, there is an administrative fee, right? If you go to America, I think it's a few dollars. Canada, I think it's about seven Canadian dollars. Another one they're bringing into Europe will also have a fee attached. But now they've said, well, no, Thailand's not going to have one, which I think they're missing a trick here because you know, I think Thailand are always known for being able to, you know, extract as much money from tourists as possible when they enter the country. Fair play to them. But here's a perfect moment. But then I thought about it. This 300 baht tourism fee has suddenly popped up again. Now, if they want to introduce, and I don't know why they haven't been able to, they seem to have not been able to develop a system to do so, but I believe they have the perfect system here now. So firstly, 92 visa exempt countries, these are basically tourists traveling to Thailand, right? 92. So charge them the 300 baht when they're doing their ETA. That's it. For other people, they require visas, so they're not visa exempt. So how would you charge them? We'll tack on 300 baht onto the price of the visa in their home country when they're applying to come to Thailand. And then you're done and dusted. There's always been this talk about it's difficult to do because, well, airlines won't do it, right? They won't put it on to the ticket because they don't want to be in, they don't want to be interested in that. And then it has to have a special system to be able to be integrated with the airlines booking systems and all that kind of stuff. And that was one of the things. Second thing was, well, how do you differentiate Thai people from foreigners traveling because you don't want to be traveling you don't want to be charging thai people to enter the country right absolutely not and then there's the next thing expats are saying well i'm not a tourist you know um i'm on a non-immigrant visa i'm working here in thailand i'm a retiree i'm married you know i have a, a non-b visa or whatnot you know these kind of people also are saying well why should i be paying it because i'm not a tourist and this is where I think the Entry Thailand, the ETA, comes in because I think it's a perfect opportunity on halfway through the ETA at the end. Well, oh, please pay your 300 baht tourist fee. And then, done and dusted, you get your tourist fee. And 
you don't need to worry. Me, as somebody with a non-B visa, for example, I wouldn't be filling out the ETA because it's only for people who are on visa exempt. Therefore, I won't have to pay the fee. For people who are on tourist visas, they will have already paid the fee in advance, let's say, because they'll tack it on to the visa fee. Done and dusted. It all sounds quite easy to do, but I'm not, I, I hope the government are not missing a trick here. I believe Thailand, and especially when tourists come here, you know, there's no difference. 300 baht is not a big amount of money. And people pay tourist fees to ever, many, many countries to go to. And people pay the ETA. Right? You go to America, as I said, you go to Canada. People are paying these fees and they have no issue with it. No problem to do it. But suddenly when they come to Thailand, they have a real problem with paying 300 baht to enter the country. So I think this is the moment that they can bring it all in together and start to charge people through their ETA system. And then they have an extra form of revenue, which what they want to do with it. Do you want to use it for travel insurance, for tourists entering the country? Probably a good idea. I know the free travel insurance that I spoke about that the government would cover is expired at the end of August uh, last month. So that's gone. Um, so it is a good opportunity for them. Also, take some money out and put it into developing tourist attractions and proper facilities for people when they go there. That would be another good thing to use the money. And then have somebody to oversee this money to ensure that corruption does not happen, which obviously is one of the big fears when there's large amounts of money in play here in the country is that parts of it disappear. But I do think the government have a good opportunity now to bring in their tourist fee. Look, I'm neither for or against the tourist fee. If they want to do it, that's their business. It's their country and they should be allowed to do what they want. For example, if I want to go to Turkey, right, as an Irish citizen, I have to get a visa. Now, I know the visa that I have to get to go to Turkey is bullshit. Because when I apply for it, I pretty much get it approved within about two minutes of paying the fee. And it's only a money-making racket. Really, that's all it is. It's a money-making racket. But fair play to them. I don't mind paying for it. Because if I want to go to Turkey, I have to pay the fee to get there. And for people who want to come to Thailand as tourists, they want to come then they have to pay the fee and i see this will in no way affect tourism numbers in this country absolutely not people love thailand they love coming here and they'll pay their fee if they have to and that's the bottom line but i'd love to know what you think about all this do you think the eta is a good idea do you think the reintroduction now of this 300 baht fee is a good idea your comments as always down below in the comment section now if you're a bit queasy you don't like snakes skip to the next story a 60 four-year-old woman in Samut Prakan was rescued on Tuesday after a four meter long python weighing at least 20 kilograms wrapped itself around her body for nearly two hours. The woman was washing dishes at her home near a forest when the snake attacked, biting her in the thigh. Despite her attempts to fend it off, the snake coiled around her body, leaving her struggling for breath. Her calls for help were eventually heard by a passing neighbor who contacted rescuers. They broke her, uh, they broke into the locked home and freed her after a 30 minute effort. She was taken to a nearby hospital with multiple bite wounds, but is now recovering. Pythons are non-venomous, but their bites can lead to infections. And finally, a major international drug trafficker from Singapore, Benny Ki Soon, was arrested in Thailand with the cooperation of Thai and Singaporean authorities. The arrest was announced at a press conference on September 18th by Police Lieutenant General Panarat, Secretary General at the Office of the Narcotics Control Board, and Mr. Paran McCannan, Director of the Narcotics Suppression Bureau. The arrest followed a tip-off from Singapore's Central Narcotics Bureau in August, identifying Benny as a high-level trafficker wanted in Singapore. He had been using Thailand as a transit hub for shipping drugs like ice, ketamine and ecstasy to Singapore and Australia. Benny was tracked to a luxurious residence in Samut Prakan province, where he lived without formal employment but displayed an affluent lifestyle. Now, Benny's visa was revoked and he was arrested on September 17th. His drug trafficking network has been connected to earlier seizures of drugs bound for Singapore and Australia. Benny will be extradited to Singapore where he faces severe penalties under the country's strict anti-drug laws.